Hi, and welcome to another episode of Z Notes Live. I'm Aishwarya, your host, and we have Afreen today, and we will be covering the topic of enzymes. Hello, Afreen, over to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, so today we'll be looking at chapter five of IGCSE Biology. Uh, this is, it's called enzymes. And so we'll start with the syllabus. So according to the syllabus, you need to know what's a catalyst, you need to know what's an enzyme, and you need to know why enzymes are important, and you need to know how enzymes enzymes work, just briefly, and then you need to know how enzymes are affected by different conditions, physical conditions, and then um, if you're taking the extended course, you'll need to know uh, about how enzymes work in, in a little more detail. You'll need to know that enzymes are uh, specific to their purposes, and you should be able to describe how different physical changes affect enzymes and its activity. So starting uh, starting off, you need to know what's a catalyst. So if you take um, IGCC chemistry, you should have a brief idea about what is a catalyst. It's a chemical or a substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction, and uh, it's not used up or changed by the reaction itself. So uh, the catalyst is a chemical, It's present in the it's present in the reactants the same way as it was in the product uh in in the products so it doesn't it, it doesn't change in any way it doesn't uh, get used up the, its only purpose is to speed up a reaction now enzymes are biological catalysts so uh enzymes are not chemicals per se uh they're enzymes so enzymes are involved in all metabolic reactions and they function. They primarily function as biological catalysts, and enzymes are crucial. Uh, they're very important in life processes, and um, because many metabolic reactions would be too slow uh, to sustain life without enzymes, so all or it would lead to the death of an organism. So that's basically it about the importance of enzyme and what is an enzyme and what is a catalyst. So that's like the first few parts of the syllabus. You should be, um, this would usually come in paper four. Uh, they'll ask you why are enzymes important? And um, this is actually kind of uncommon. The more common questions are here. So this is, uh, okay. So uh, yeah, they'll basically ask you why are enzymes important? And you should be able to state that Rea metabolic reactions would be too slow without enzymes and it will lead to the death of an organism. Uh, so there's the second part of the chapter uh, of the syllabus states that we need to know about the lock and key theory. So this is basically how the enzyme functions. Um, if you'll remember when I was uh, outlining the syllabus, I mentioned how enzymes are complementary to their specific purpose. Uh, what you need to be you need to know is that enzymes are complementary to the specific uh, molecules they break down the, uh, to the substrates. So a substrate is basically a molecule that uh, is to be broken down. Like this is the uh, reactant, right? And then, so basically the substrate and the enzyme kind of lock each other and then the enzymes enzyme can break it down into a smaller uh, molecule. Uh, so for example, there's, this is something you'll learn in another chapter but you'll probably remember from the previous chapter a bit of it. So if you take carbohydrate, okay, and you take um, carbohydrase, there's an enzyme called carbohydrase. So uh, if uh, the carbohydrase basically breaks down carbohydrates into glucose, which is, um, glucose is the most simple form of sugar and carbohydrate is a more um, complex form. So basically an enzyme takes a complex molecule and breaks it down into simple molecules. So substrate is the product that is to be, is the, it's the, substrate is the molecule that is to be broken down and product is the smaller molecules that has formed from the process of the reaction. And when the enzyme and substrate are locked in together, together the whole uh, structure is called the enzyme substrates uh, complex. So this is something you need to know. You need to know the specific term enzyme substrate complex because it's usually a key term it's a key word and that's it's um this is something that you will get one mark for according to the mark scheme so even if your answer is right but you don't mention the specific word it, there's a 
there's a big possibility that you might lose on a mark. And then there's the effect of temperature on enzymes. Okay, so basically there are two main things that affect and the function of an enzyme. There's the temperature and then there's the pH. So we'll start with temperature. All enzymes have an optimum temperature. And the optimum temperature is basically the temperature at which it works the best. So um, in um, animals, it's around 37 degrees Celsius. So um, if you measure your body temperature, that is also around 37 degrees Celsius, because this is a perfect temperature for all our enzymes to work and uh, break down complex molecules. Um, how enzymes work is basically when the molecules collide, uh, they form the compl uh, enzyme substrate complexes. So when temperature increases, the, the, the frequency of collisions increases. However, uh, okay, so and the high energy makes them more likely to bind to the active side. So now you need to know about the active side. So enzymes have a part called the active side, and this is basically the rigid part of the enzyme. Uh, this is where the enzymes, the substrate comes and locks in, right? So when the high temperature, when the temperature is high, around 37 degrees Celsius, uh, it's more likely that the substrate will bind to the active side. However, if the temperature is too high, the, the molecules and the enzymes will vibrate too quickly and the enzyme is denatured. So when it's denatured, it means that the shape of the enzyme is permanently changed and it can no longer fit the specific um, substrates. Uh, because look, an important part of what you need to know about enzymes is that enzymes are always specific to the molecules they're going to break down. So if the shape is um, changed, if it's um, denatured, when you when the shape of an enzyme is changed, we say that it is denatured. So when it's denatured, the, it's essentially um, not functioning anymore, it's useless. And this can lead to multiple problems um, and may even lead to the death of an organism. Like I already mentioned earlier, uh, if enzymes are not present in the body, uh, it will lead to the death of an organism. However, and furthermore, uh, if the temperature is too low, then the molecules do not have enough uh, kinetic energy to uh, bind with, uh, to move and bind with each other. So the reactions uh, are far, far slower, and it kind of beats the purpose of the enzyme itself. So there, that's why it needs a perfect temperature. And uh, further into the presentation, we'll look into a graph that basically shows uh, the, the optimum temperature visually. And this uh, um, more accurately and clearly depicts, depicts how uh, the effect of temperature works on enzymes. So pH, pH is, um, enzymes are sensitive to pH as well, like already mentioned. Um, so some enzymes work uh, best in acid while others work best in alkaline conditions so that's why you'll find some acids in our stomach um, our stomach has um, our the ph in our stomachs are very low and these enzymes are ideal these these uh, ph conditions are uh, ideal for the um, enzymes present in our stomach so these are <clears throat> some the one of the enzymes present in our stomach is protease protease and these are basically enzymes that break down proteins uh, and the acidic conditions are ideal for these enzymes. So that's why it's present in that condition. So, and then there are small intestines. However, they are more alkaline because of the bile present there. And there are some other uh, enzymes like amylase that's more um, suited to the low, higher pH there. So like temperature, there's also an optimum pH. And if um, the optimum pH is not present, then the enzyme will be denatured and will no longer fit with the particular molecule it was supposed to break down, um, ultimately making it um, useless as no reaction takes place. So this is the graph I was talking about. So there's a graph for the effect of temperature and effect of pH. Um, this is not something you need to memorize. If there's a question based on graphs, it's usually that they'll give you the graph and they'll ask you to interpret the graph. And the question would likely be something like, describe what's happening in the graph. So you have to say, you have to, ex you don't have to say what, why it's happening. You have to say exactly what's happening in the graph. So you have to say in the beginning, the rate of the reaction is slow because 
uh, either the temperature is too low or the pH is too low. However, as, as it goes higher, uh, the rate of uh, activity increases and at one point it peaks and they'll usually give you numbers. So you should, it's better to mention the point where it peaks and then you need to state that it's okay. Then the rate of reaction starts falling because uh, the temperature is higher than the optimum temperature. And when it when the graph reaches zero, you have to mention that the enzyme has been denatured and it no longer functions. Similarly for the pH, if you'll notice, uh, over here, I would assume this is peaking around um, seven. So you need to mention, okay, so this enzyme, this particular enzyme functions best at, at the pH of seven, that's neutral conditions. So if it's the, if the pH is too low, the rate of reaction is too low. And if it's too high, then uh, once again, the rate of reaction is too low and it, the enzyme may get denatured. And that's about it for chapter five. You also need to know um, some of the common pro uh, co common enzyme names. This is something we'll look more into detail in chapter seven, that's human nutrition. Um, so we'll look at amylase and protease and peptase and pepsin, trypsin, pepsin and uh, lipase. So these are all enzymes that are specific for fats, proteins and carbohydrates. <clears throat> And yeah, so that's for that's it for the enzyme chapter. So we'll look at some questions. This is February, March, 2018. An experiment was carried out to investigate the effect of pH on enzyme action. The graph shows the results. Okay, so what are the results for the, what are the labels for the X axis and the Y axis? So if you remember from the previous slides, the Y axis uh, was the rate of the reaction and the X axis is either pH or um, time or temperature, right? So over here, it's it can't be temperature because the question st states that it's the effect of pH, right? And um, another thing you should know, this is not just for biology, this is for all the sciences. Uh, the independent variable is in the x-axis and the dependent variable is in the y-axis. So if you if you learn this, this will actually be very useful to you, especially in paper six, where there's a design a graph question. So to answer this question, the x axis should be pH, and the y axis is either uh, time or rate of reaction. So since we're uh, investigating the effect of pH on enzyme action, it should probably be rate of reaction. So the answer is A. Uh, and the next question is May, June, 2016. Which graph shows the effect of temperature on the activity of an enzyme? Uh, okay. Which graph shows the effect of um, temperature on the activity of an enzyme? Uh, okay. So you have to look at the y-axis and the x-axis once again, and then you have to look at how the graph is peaking and how it's rising. So you should know that usually enzymes are not active in, uh, at zero, zero degree Celsius. So option C and D are out, okay? And another thing about temperature is that the once it peaks, the fall isn't linear. It's not a smooth car, uh, curve, it, it falls down right. Like if at a certain point after the optimum temperature, uh, the enzyme is denatured and then the activity just drops to zero. So over here, the answer is A. And then the next question is, four test tubes were set up as shown in the diagram. In which test tube is the starch digested most quickly? So you have to observe the diagrams and the apparatus is similar in both the, both the, both the water baths. Um, there's a starch solution and a amylase inside A. There's a starch solution and boiled amylase inside B. So you, if you see the word boiled, you should know that the temperature has gone too far, too high, and the enzyme is very likely, most likely, very likely, it, it probably is um, denatured. So you have to keep that in mind. And test tube C, start solution in the amylase, and test tube D, once again, start solution and boil the amylase. And then, so we've looked at what's inside the test tubes. They haven't mentioned uh, if there's anything other than water in the water baths. So we, yeah, so there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do in the water baths uh, except for the temperature. So the first 
water bath is at 15 degrees Celsius and the second water bath is at 35 degrees Celsius. Uh, so, like I said, um, since this uh, enzyme is found in um, animals, the optimum temperature is around 37, which uh, 35 is quite close to. So it's probably C or D. And since D has boiled the minus, it's denatured. So it can't be D. So the correct answer is C. Okay, and then this is February, March, 2018. The graph shows the activity of three digestive enzymes of at differing pH levels. Which statement is correct? Okay. Um, so they gave you three different um, enzymes, X, Y, and Z, and they they all peak at different pH levels. So pH uh, enzyme X peaks at around pH three, and enzyme Y peaks at pH eight, and enzyme Z peaks at pH nine or ten. I think it's ten. Um, okay, so you have to find the correct statement. So in these kind of questions, it's always ideal to read all the options because some multiple choice questions, uh, the answer might be obvious, but over here, it's not always obvious. So option A states that enzymes X and Y are both active at pH 7. So let's look at pH 7. X and Y, uh, no. Enzyme X is not active at pH 7 because it is uh, denatured at uh, right after pH pH 6. And uh, the option B states that enzymes X and Z are both active at pH 4. So X and Z, pH 4. Um, X is active at pH 4. However, Z is not active at pH 4. It's only active around P 4.5. Um, enzyme Y and Z are both active at pH 4. Uh, once again, no. Y is active at pH 4, but Z is not. So that only leaves us with one option, that's D. Enzymes Y and Z are both active at pH 8. If you look at, if you look at pH 8, that is correct. Both the, op, uh, both the enzymes are active at pH 8. So the option is, correct option is D. And those were the practice questions. So that's basically it for IGCC Biology Chapter 5. Thank you so much, Afreen, for your time. We hope uh, this live session helped your understanding on enzyme improve. You can follow our social media handles using the poster that will come up next. Thank you very much for your time.